And then this article came out via Bloomberg. Living standards fall to 2004 levels in Canada's oil province. This was May 9th, 2024. So everything is going against the people that are moving. The unemployment rate is skyrocketing in Canada in certain places. Meanwhile, it's going down in other places. And we've got one province which has seen so much speculation, which is Alberta, which is seeing the unemployment rate skyrocket out of control to 2021 levels. Anyway, let's get right into the data and see what's going on here. So this is the labor force survey for April 2024. So employment increased by 9 20,000.0.4% in April and the unemployment rate was unchanged at 6.1%. The employment rate held steady at 61.4% following six consecutive monthly declines. So let's continue on here and see what happened in different provinces. So employment increased in Ontario plus 25,000, British Columbia plus 23,000 and Quebec plus 19,000 and New Brunswick plus 7,800 hundred jobs in April. It was little changed in other provinces or so they say, but as you'll see, it changed quite a bit. So average hourly wages among employees increased 4.7% to plus one dollar 57 cents nearly 35 bucks an hour i mean i'm sure all of you guys are thinking right now is anybody being paid that much i mean come on the government workers for sure the government workers the city workers people who work for these cities municipalities provincial governments federal governments yeah i'm sure they're getting paid average around that wage and when you look at the jobs created a lot of them are public sector but this month there was decent gains in the private sector you can see here private sector employment rose in april plus 50,000 following four consecutive months of little change there were also more people employed in the public sector of course plus 26,000 but you know what this is the most decent change in private sector employment that we have seen in a while so that is worth noting obviously things aren't going to go down in a straight line we know this on this channel but when it comes to employment, this report is probably the most rosy report that we've had in at least six to 12 months. And that is worth mentioning. However, all was not equal among the provinces as we're going to get into living standards collapsing in Alberta. And also you've got more than 1 million people working in Calgary or looking for work. So we'll get into that and everything around that after we just go through what's going on with the provinces. So this is the map of where the unemployment rate really changed. And you can see here that Alberta in particular saw unemployment rate go up to 7%, the highest since 2021, really, really high. Calgary is now among the top five cities in the country where unemployment is the highest. What a great, great thing to have. Anyway, BC at 5%, they've dropped half a percent in their unemployment. You can see here Ontario, 6.8%, Quebec, 5.1%. Some drops in the Atlantic provinces down 1% in New Finland. So obviously everything is different across the provinces. If you look into the breakdowns of which industries saw jobs increasing, professional, scientific and technical services was top. We saw a lot of jobs added in accommodation and food services, healthcare and social assistance, IT, natural resources. That's a good bump because we've seen so many declining months for that. You've got transportation and warehousing. If you go down to the declines, you've got educational services, you utilities, agriculture, which is surprising in April, construction down as well, which is kind of what you would expect with everything that's going on with the housing market right now. And you can see those numbers written there. Again, all these links are going to be in the description of this video. What I really want to talk about is what's going on in Alberta, because it's very, very interesting. So this is net migration across Alberta, and you'll have to excuse it's hard to fit this on the screen, but you can basically see see how net migration has absolutely skyrocketed. Now, if we take it out and just move it to interprovincial net migration, you can see that it is well within sort of historic trends that we've seen in the past in these boom bust cycles. You know, Alberta since the 1970s has been seeing these boom bust cycles. And it is no wonder because, you know, people might be moving out here
here for all the right reasons. But if the economy doesn't support it, it does not matter. It doesn't matter how emotional everybody gets about moving. Oh, I'm going to move for cheaper real estate. My life's going to be fantastic. If the economy doesn't support you, then you're going to be screwed. And we've seen this play out time and time again. Maybe I'm going to be wrong this time. Maybe we're all going to be wrong on this one. And maybe we're not going to see a repeat of this. There's always a chance of that. And I accept that. But when you really look at what's going on, especially the headlines that we're now seeing, it's almost like a mirror image of what happened in 2014, 2016, which we're going to get into those exact articles. So stay with me here because I just find these things incredibly fascinating, especially these sort of migration cycles. And this is one of the most extreme we've seen. So the Alberta unemployment rate has now hit that high here, 7%. And you have to go all the way back, guys, to 2021. Just think about that for a second. Just honestly sit there and think about that for a second of where the economy was in 2021 and where it is right now. And the unemployment rate in Alberta is hitting the same amount. Now, I want to be clear here. The housing market is in a bubble. Sure, it's it's less expensive than other cities in Canada, but that doesn't justify price increases. You can't just say, oh yeah, this penny stock is cheaper than Apple because you're comparing two completely different things. Now, that's an extreme example, but I'm just using that to get my point across. A lot of people will go, well, Calgary's cheaper than Toronto. Okay, but that doesn't justify, you know, buying a house at all-time highs or anything like that. To most people, unfortunately, because they've gone kind of loco with this real estate mania that we've seen happening, they are just literally brainwashed to think that if I just buy this house, I'm going to ride this to the moon. And maybe that's the case. Again, that could happen. Who knows? But it really doesn't look like it when you look at the deteriorating economy behind the scenes. And that's what we're looking at on this channel. So the risk just keeps going up here, guys, in Alberta. And the other thing that is also affecting valuations, if you watch my video on how to value real estate like an actual investor versus emotions, then you'll know that with rents going down, especially at the high end, you know, all the focus in places like Calgary is on buying single family homes, townhomes. These are the areas which are starting to see the rents come down a little now. Meanwhile, prices are still going up. So you've got the spread just increasing. Meanwhile, the unemployment rate is also heading upwards. So again, guys, it's just not going to be a good thing long term when you really think about it. That is deteriorating behind the scenes. This article here, guys, again, it's just crazy to me. This was written in 2014. You can see right here. According to the latest numbers from Statistics Canada, Caltech leads the country in terms of population growth of 4.3%. Looking at the chart, 56,973 people between 2012 and 2013 moved to our city and now call themselves Calgarians. And of course, there was a boom going on back then. And did the boom sustain itself? Absolutely not. Just like every other time when you go back through history in Calgary. There's not nearly enough rental properties and affordable places to live. And until we build more, people are going to continue to struggle, Hamilton said. We wish fewer people were coming to us looking for help. We wish there were better opportunities out there for those people looking and in need of shelter. I mean, guys, we're talking back in 2014 here. We're not talking 2024, but you're going to see articles mirror these articles. And then literally, guys, 2015, the following year, you had this come out via the CBC, more people moving out of Alberta this year. Who would have thought that when you look at the boom Boom that was happening literally the year before. I mean, you just can't make this stuff up. And people think, ah, oh, there's no way this is going to happen now. So the latest statistics show the number of people leaving Alberta for other provinces is on the rise. Statistics Canada said nearly 17,600 Albertans moved elsewhere in Canada for the first three months of this year. That's up from 14,700 at the start of 2014 and 10,000 during the same time period in 2013. We have noticed a trend of people moving Alberta due to the lack of jobs. And again, I highlight that area because obviously we know the economy is bigger than the government. The economy is bigger than people
people's emotions. And when it comes down to this, most of these people are moving out of emotions, not fundamentals. Because if they were looking at the fundamentals, they wouldn't be moving. I mean, this is just a silly time if you're in a secure job to just say, yeah, you know what? We're going to move across the country to another place where the cost of everything is skyrocketing, but at least real estate prices are cheaper. You know, property taxes are going up double digits every year. <laughs> you know, I just don't get it, guys. I find it really, really funny what's happening here. But you can see whether they're laid off or there's not as many lucrative positions available as there were maybe last year or or the last previous three years. So again, this is in 2015, guys. This is not 2024, and this is not 2025. Obviously, we can't predict the future here. And then this article came out via Bloomberg. Living standards fall to 2004 levels in Canada's oil province. This was May 9th, 2024. So everything is going against the people that are moving. Canada's oil-rich province of Alberta saw its economy shrink to 2004 levels on a per person basis as the region's population swelled according to the economists and the economy didn't swell with it. Alberta's gross domestic product per capita fell 2.2% in 2023, the second fastest decline out of any Canadian province. The drop was driven by population growth of 4.1%, well outpacing the 1.5% gain in economic activity. Rising housing costs particularly in Toronto and Vancouver, have driven tens of thousands of Canadians to Alberta in search of cheaper real estate. While the influx has bolstered parts of the economy, it has crowded schools and driven up the costs for residents. I mean, does that sound sustainable to you? And then they've got Canada's collapsing living standards, which we know about and have discussed so many times on this channel. You can see Canada absolutely collapsing down here. Germany is also going down, but not at the rate in Canada. So the province's GDP per capita has fallen to $71,900, the lowest level since 2010 when excluding the pandemic and the same as 2000. <laughs> I mean, this is just ridiculous, guys. And when I really look at people coming here, it's all emotions. It's all emotions. I say here, but I'm not there. It doesn't make any sense. I mean, a lot of these people are literally moving because of real estate. That is it. They're not looking at the smoke, which is absolutely insane. It's absolutely toxic and carcinogenic. Cancer rates in Alberta are going to skyrocket over the next couple of decades because of the amount of smoke, the toxic smoke that is wafting all throughout Alberta in the summer. I mean, they've already had smoke literally a couple of weeks ago where it was terrible. The PM 2.5 levels are off the chart and it's one of the highest in the world for PM 2.5 levels. You know, you can't just look at real estate prices and a lot of these people are and we've seen this show before you know they're not thinking about the winters they're not thinking about the smoke everybody's just moving because they're thinking you know I'm just going to be able to buy this house and then I'm going to be set for life and people are going to lose jobs they are losing jobs the data is backing that up so how long is this going to sustain itself when is this going to revert to its mean when is it going to revert back to fundamentals who's to say I really don't know. When you look at the housing market in particular, incredibly strong trend right now. So it would be foolish to say that this was just going to suddenly reverse. And when you're in a bubble, things don't go according to fundamentals. But when they revert to the fundamentals, the gap and how fast they come down can be insane, as we're going to go through later in this week with some of the insane declines that we're seeing in the housing markets across Canada. So it's incredibly important to remember that. And then finally, I just want to show you this article, incredibly interesting again, for first time, more than 1 million people are now working or looking for work in Calgary. Unemployment rate jumps to 7.7 as job spur outpaced by population growth, also known as the economy can't handle all the people going to places like Calgary. So you can see what's happening, the labor force skyrocketing, employed also going up, but it just can't keep up. I mean, just look at this. It's just absolutely gone parabolic. This is starting to flatten out now. Heaven forbid this starts coming down. You guys know 
how bad that is going to be. And then you look at the unemployment rate and the amount of people unemployed and it's just skyrocketing, not in labor force, starting to come down as well. So that's also going to be sending the unemployment rate up. And then you look at the metro areas, the top five in the country, Windsor, 8.4% unemployment, St. Catharines, Niagara, Ontario, 7.9% where John Flynn is, Toronto, Ontario, 7.7%, Calgary, 7.7%. So these are the top five cities in the country where you're seeing the unemployment rate, which has really gone up and also is very high. Like 7.7% is a high unemployment rate by all definitions, you know? So you have to remember that. And it's the highest since 2021. And again, you have to think about where the economy was back in 2021. I mean, they literally had all these rules, regulations. There was heavy restrictions back then on the economy and the unemployment rates getting that high. Recipe for disaster, in my opinion. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this video, I'd highly recommend that you check out that video there. If you're looking for a VPN, go to expressvpn.com forward slash market mania. And I will see you guys in the next one. Take care.